Uh, we are super excited about this opportunity uh, to just present options for those of you around the state who are interested in becoming a micro lender, an SBA micro lender. Um, my name is Lisa Smith. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the executive director of the Washington State Micro Enterprise Association. Uh, I'm an older white woman with kind of blondish black hair and I've got a blurred background. I've got a blue turtleneck with a red scarf because it's so cold. And I'm just really pleased to have um, these amazing presenters with us today. I'm gonna just do a very brief overview of our program so you all have a context of um, our work around the state. We have been involved in helping micro enterprise development organizations get um, organized, become trainers, become micro lenders. And this is just one more um, strategy in that, in that path. So I'm just gonna begin by saying what we do around Washington State is help to lower barriers to business ownership. And one of the ways we do that is to uh, provide training and technical assistance for folk organizations like yours, do grant making and tech resource coordination. We do want to lower barriers to make it easier for folks to find the resources they need, including financing, which is what this workshop is about. Some of the programs we've done in the past, you can see Beto in one of these other programs we've worked with in the past, is just to help sharpen the saw of organizations who are serving businesses on the ground. We also do grant making. Uh, we funded $2 million to 80 nonprofits in February of this year. We look forward to doing more in the next year. And then finally, Evergreen BizLink, which is a way for businesses to find the resources they need around Washington State. And here are wonderful partners, two of whom are in our, our room here today. And I thank you humbly for just um, learning more about this work. So I also am really excited to share that Beto Yarse, who is a, really a leader, has been a leader in Washington State for so long, uh, is joining us today. And we're excited because he represents what's possible uh, in so many ways around the country. Beto Yarse was appointed by President Joe Biden to serve as the regional administrator of the US Small Business Administration's Region 10, that's our region here, uh, in January, 2024. And in this role, he oversees the US SBA programs and offices, operations in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Alaska, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. And you know there are 1.3 million small businesses located in this region. So we're very lucky to have Beto here today. Although he couldn't be here personally, um, he is here by video. And we are excited to have this opportunity to have him welcome all of you. The so regional administrator for Region 10, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. I'm so happy to be here with everybody. All right, can we and I just want to have this opportunity to talk about a little bit about what is access to capital in our region and beyond as a small business administration or goals on how we're trying to meet people where they are and how with the microloan program, we're trying to really reach that bridge of trust between underserved communities and the federal government. As a former a small business administrator, administrator uh, micro lender, I want to tell you a little bit of like, what was my inclination and my desire to become a micro lender and how all those years that I was serving as the executive director for ventures and a micro lender who is a top performer in Washington and the success stories that we have when we were able to deploy the capital the federal government SBA was able to give us to us. And a lot of people have asked questions about how was experience, what are you thinking about becoming a micro lender, or you are curious. And I will just say that my experience was definitely super positive, not only because it gave me the opportunity to become certified by 
by the federal government and as, as a microlender for the Small Business Administration, but also the opportunity to elevate the status of my organization. Uh, it gives you some kind of prestige when you have been certified as a microlender for the federal government. And then I leverage that as that opportunity for me to do more fundraising to support the concept of microlending in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, the microloan program has been underutilized, and my goal as a regional administrator for Region 10 and beyond nationally is how do we do more microlending? How do we deploy more small loans? Uh, because when you deploy smaller loans, you're really reaching out to those communities who have not been underserved, have been marginalized. Uh, the power of a small loan to a company, to a small business is just beautiful. I have seen so many stories over the years of my uh, support of small businesses uh, on how you deploy a $5,000 loan. And I have stories of like, you deploy those 5,000, you help, you provide technical assistance, training, coaching, incubation, and then this individual come back and say, well, I want another micro loan for 15,000. You support it with the same concept. And then years pass, I recently have the opportunity to meet someone who just closed their building for $2 million and she was a micro lender uh, uh, client. So I really encourage you to think about what will make the impact in your community on deploying these uh, smaller loans. How do you will remove barriers to access to capital to those communities? And I think we are here to support you and navigate and get uh, building capacity into your organization with the Small Business Administration. So again, the team is going to support you to navigate the process. And I'm here to advocate for all of you. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you enjoy the training and learn about what the microloan program could be a benefit for your organization. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Saludos. We are very fortunate here to be joined by three excellent speakers. And so I'd like each of you to just take a moment to share who you are and what you are going to be talking about, and then we'll go into the full program. Okay. I'm going to get back up here and open this up a little bit more. Good, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Janie Sacco. I am the Outreach and Marketing Specialist with the Seattle District Office of the Small Business Administration. And I'm a middle-aged woman with dark brown hair and Caucasian uh, looking person. And I'm wearing a red velvet robe today. Uh, and I've got my, my uh, background blurred and I'm just excited to be here for you. Thank you, Janie. And Karen with SNAP Financial Access, go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Karen Campbell. I'm the Director of Financial Stability at SNAP Financial Access. We're a division of SNAP, Spokane Neighborhood Action Partners. I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. Um, SNAP is one of the largest cap agencies in eastern Washington, and SNAP Financial Access is the subsidiary of SNAP that does all of the SBA and CDFI lending. I use she, her pronouns. I am wearing uh, a bright chartreuse shirt today, um, and I've got blondish hair. Uh, I've been working here at SNAP uh, for about 10 years. I'm a former entrepreneur, so like Beto, and like many people on the call and our staff members, um, I've got firsthand knowledge about how the right amount of money at the right time is so powerful for a small business. And today I'm just going to be talking about the nuts and bolts. How do you make this work on the ground, um, both the SBA loan program and the companion grant, the SBA technical assistance grant? Beautiful. Thank you. How about you, Shane? A leader yeah. in middle part of our state. Go for it. I am right in the middle. Thank you for the invitation to attend this phenomenal event. My name is Shawnee Fitzgerald, and I am the Executive Director of the Washington African American Chamber of Commerce, located here in Eastern Washington. Our goal is to empower and support African American businesses and entrepreneurs by providing resources, networking opportunities, and advocacy. I am wearing a green blazer today, a white shirt. I am a Black 
or African American uh, female here uh, in uh, the what we call BIPOC uh, community government term. If you're familiar with that, and I do support um, young entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs. We help them with various, uh, you know, information and resources, and making sure that they have access to capital. Which is why I'm here today to talk about some upcoming opportunities with the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Shawnee, and thank you, Karen and Janie. And so for all of you, if uh, if you would just uh, put any questions you have in the Q&A um, box on your the lower part of your screen, if you have any questions, you put them there, uh, and then we will have the speakers answer the questions at the end. And I just want to say, uh, in my older life, I was a micro lender, and uh, this is really important to me because when an entrepreneur who has historically been denied or um, not had access to financing and they get that first 5,000 or the first 10,000 and they build their capacity to grow, it is a game changer. And so often access to these microloans has been so uh, limited, few and far between the opportunities where businesses have been able to reach these points of access. And so, we want all of you to consider if it's right for you to be that micro lender in your community. There are other ways of helping entrepreneurs get financing, and we'll talk about those in the future as well. But this is just a wonderful way to, to open your eyes and the opportunity for becoming an SBA micro lender. Okay, so we're going to again begin by having Janie start and share the big picture and where, where we are with this. Go for it, Janie. Well, thank you, Lisa. I get to kick us off with uh, the rules and particular things about our um, our uh, little program. And, you know, I, having been, um, been a micro lender in the past in one of my jobs before I worked for the Small Business Administration, you just need to know about me that I was a lender for 32 years doing small business loans in varying capacities. And I always had an affinity for the micro loan program. And uh, this program is managed out of the Office of Financial Assistance, uh, the Micro Enterprise Development Division. And I will have a contact person at the end of my slide. But I really want to start with a few questions just to kind of stimulate your thoughts about micro lending. I want you to think what you could do for your community if you had at the start up to $750,000 to re-lend into your community. Um, think about what could a $50,000 loan do for a small business owner in your community. These are, um, the nucleus um, elements of the initial borrowing and, and maximum loan amount that is available under this program. And again, having done these small loans in the past, I know what a $20,000 loan can do for a small business owner to acquire a business. So um, you, as a micro lender, fulfill uh, this wonderful market segment of giving people who have a dream and or an idea, um, the, the ability to bring it to fruition, to bring it to life. And this is the importance of the micro lending program. So the SBA's mission overall is to help sm small business owners, whether they're starting a business or they're in existence already to grow, expand, and then in times of difficulty, like with the COVID issue, recover. And that's our mission. So the one that uh, program that we have that is our smallest maximum dollar loan amount is the micro loan program. And this slide gives you a visual about how the program works in terms of the flow of the money. So you have the Small Business Administration as a lender in this situation. And you, as 
a microloan enterprise are the intermediary lender. And then your clients are our micro businesses. So what you do as a micro lender is borrow money from the SBA to relend to micro businesses in your community. And as those micro businesses repay you, you use those funds that you've borrowed to repay your SBA loan. And the really interesting thing to me about this program that gives you a lot of benefit is that the loan uh, that you borrow as the intermediary from the SBA has a 10 year maturity. However, you don't have to make payments on it for the first 12 months that you have that loan in place. So that gives you time to underwrite loans, get them approved, ask the SBA for funding, have the money draw down and have your micro business, your small business in the community, get their business up and running, generating cash flow to repay you. And you have a nice 12 month period of time to get that going and develop a reserve of cash to make the payments to the SBA. And the, the other thing that I think is really a point here is that when you go in and you do your first loan with the SBA, um, you don't have to draw all the money down at one time. You can approve loans and then get ready to do one draw and you can do multiple draws on your note until you've exhausted all of the, the draw capacity on that loan. All right. So that's the flow. And uh, it, it is pretty efficient uh, once you get the hang of everything. So we're going to talk now on this slide about really how the program works in terms of um, just overall funding capability. So your maximum borrowing on your first loan is $750,000. Now, can you borrow less than $750,000 for your first loan? Yes, but that's the maximum. Any subsequent loans after the first one can be up to $2.5 million. At any one point in time, the maximum money that your organization can have outstanding on this program is $7 million. All right. So again, you're ebbing and flowing with your dollar amount because you're drawing down your term loan and then you're repaying the note. All right. And as I indicated, um, this loan is 10 years from the date of the note. The interest rate that you as the borrowing entity pay is the five-year T-bill rate less either 2% or 1.25%. And why is there a difference? Well, we have kind of two, two tiers of loan amounts for your borrower to do develop that cost of funds. If your micro loan is under $10,000, then you take the T-bill rate and deduct 2%. So let's say the T-bill rate is 4.65. Your cost of funds, if your average micro loan size for this program only is under $10,000, then your cost of funds would be 2.65%. If your loans are above the $10,000 on average, then it costs a little bit less, I'm sorry, a little bit more, and you take that T-bill rate and you deduct 1.25% from it. So again, using the example of a 4.65 T-bill rate minus 1.25%, your cost of funds would be, if my math is correct, <laughs> let me see, um, 3.40, all right? So that's your cost of funds for an example. And again, what I wanna emphasize here is only the loans that you do that are under this program. You can have a lot of other loans out there under, under, other, under other funding programs, but they do not impact um, this cost of funds calculation. The collateral that the SBA takes on this loan is solely 
the notes that you generate under it. No other collateral is taken. And on the note, there's specific wording in the document that is required on each note. And it indicates that there is a pledge of this loan as collateral uh, for the micro loan that you've borrowed. All right. Um, the other thing that you need to have once you start just requesting draws on the loan is matching funds of 15% of the dollar amount that you're borrowing or drawing down at the time. Okay. So, um, and that money goes into a loan loss reserve fund. And we have acronyms up the kazoo. So it's a LERF. And you'll see that again a little bit later. But um, the thing that you want to keep in mind there is that that money has to be non-borrowed and non-federal funds. So if you're active as a micro lender, you're going to be taking some of your working capital reserve and putting it in um, the loan loss reserve fund uh, to, to cover that 15%. So an example of that is on your first loan, if you have a $750,000 loan and your first draw is $100,000, that at that point in time, you need to have $15,000 in your loan loss reserve fund. You could also have it in um, your a, another fund, which we'll talk about in a minute here. But the bottom line is that you have to have 15% in reserve uh, when you borrow, uh, regardless of the dollar amount that you're drawing down. Okay, you still have to have 15% of that. And then your loan proceeds can be used to do loans of up to $50,000 or less. Your loan is fixed a fixed rate, and I'll talk about how to calculate that on the next slide. And um, you can have the loan have as short a maturity as you want, all the way up to seven years, okay? In terms of the individual loan, again, the maximum loan amount is $50,000, but if you want to do a $100 loan to a business in need or a $1,000 loan for a small equipment purchase, that's entirely up to you. You do all of the underwriting on your terms, okay? So you do not have to comply with SBA underwriting requirements like our community advantage lenders and our uh, banks and credit unions do. It's a different standard operating procedure. So you get to underwrite the loan in terms of any equity contribution and collateral, um, the use of funds within the program, and that's up to you. So it's your discretion. So you don't have to really recreate the wheel uh, for a new set of um, loan procedures for your organization, all right? In terms of the interest rate that you're able to charge, we go back to that loan amount. And if the, if the micro loan is $10,000 or less, then you can charge the cost of funds up to eight and a half percent. And again, it's a fixed rate. So think back to, you know, let's make it easy for me a little bit here. If you're doing, a, let's say the cost of funds originally was um, 5% and you're doing a $5,000 loan, well, your cost of funds becomes, um, uh, go back, Janie, your cost of funds is 3%. And you can charge on that smaller dollar loan up to an eight and a half percent spread over your cost of funds. So that would become, in this example, 11 and a half percent. But again, it can be less. That's at your discretion. Um, if your loan amount is above $10,000, then you have your cost of funds plus a maximum of 7.75 percent. Okay. Again, it's at your discretion. And when you're thinking about the use of the loan proceeds, just think that the borrower can use it for any basically um, shorter term use of funds. So if they want to buy inventory or they want to do a small build out and, and of the space that they're leasing, 
Um, they can buy furniture, fixtures, uh, do any kind of leasehold improvements that they want. They can buy equipment with it and uh, pay for the installation. They can use it for a working capital reserve. And uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, they can buy a business with those proceeds. So you have a lot of different uses. The only thing really that you cannot use the funds for are commercial real estate um, acquisition and uh, debt refinance. Okay, so in terms of collateral, you have the discretion of your underwriting what you want to take for collateral. If you want to take a vehicle, a deed of trust, a UCC, um, uh, uniform commercial code filing on the business assets, you can do that. So that's entirely your discretion. And uh, I just want to say that one of the things that uh, the director of this program does say is that you could do a no equity unsecured loan if that was within your underwriting, okay? So again, the underwriting and servicing is all done by you, all right? So it's all in place on your policies and procedures, all right? So let's talk a little bit about some definitions. Um, we For that 15%, uh, you can either put it into the microloan revolving fund, uh, which is an account that your organization establishes at a bank or credit union. And um, you need to use that fund to receive money, collect your payments, and then make the payment to the SBA. And then you have your loan loss reserve fund, um, which again, you put that 15% in. So, you know, you have a little bit of flexibility there. At least that's my understanding. Now, Karen may correct me on some of the technical details and you're welcome to do so if I mess up, okay? Because <laughs> you use the program. And All Jenny, right. you have about five minutes left. Okay, we're almost done. So the other thing I do want to mention here is uh, the technical assistance. Uh, there We have with this program up to $50,000 a technical assistance grant, but it's a matching grant. And what I want you to know about that is that it kind of does change in the terms of the dollar amount maximum from year to year. Once you're in the program, it's based on some of your lending. It's based on how much funding we receive from Congress uh, to fund the grant dollars. But the technical assistance that you do is with marketing, management, business consulting, and training. And I've indicated what the topics under the business consultant team and training are here on the slide. But um, this is a real important um, tool because what I want you to understand historically, prior to uh, COVID, the loan loss, um, loan loss rate was approximately 3%. Kind of booped up a little bit when uh, COVID happened to slightly under 7% throughout you know, the, the nation for this program but it's, it's coming back down again. And we believe it's really, in te um, the technical assistance is integral to this, all right? So that's a plus for this program. The other two little topics I wanna to touch on before I start this ladder of opportunity slide is that you do need to have 10 loans on the books where you're, you've done the underwriting, the serv documentation, the servicing, and uh, getting them to, be paid, you know, uh, they don't all have to be paid, but you do need to have that. The other requirement for your organization um, is you need to have 6,000 hours of staff time annually, which is the equivalent of three full-time equivalent employees. For those of you who are expanding this, to this program, you can project out that staffing need based on getting this funding, okay? Um, our ladders of opportunity here for the Office of Capital Access is starts with our microloan program and then goes up to our Community Advantage loan program, which the Community Advantage lenders can do loans of $350,000. We have our 504 program, which is for fixed asset acquisition, uh, which means equipment and owner-occupied commercial real estate, excluding titled um, equipment and vehicles. And then we have our SBA Express, which um, are loans up to 
$500,000. And then we have our 7A loan program, which incorporates all this stuff. And you can do loans through our lenders of up to $5 million. That's generally our banks and credit unions. And then uh, for our contractors, we have our bonding program. Great opportunity for any type of uh, business that needs bonding. You can get 20 times your working capital limit. And that's 10 times more than just regular uh, surety bond underwriting. And we have lender match, uh, which is designed to give businesses an opportunity to do a lender search nationally. And then on our entrepreneur training, we have our wonderful intermediaries that do technical assistance, such as the Women's Business Center, one of which is housed at SNAP. We have SCORE, which is the Service Corps of Retired Executives. We have the uh, Veterans Business Outreach Center, specifically for our, our veterans and their spouses. And then we have the Small Business Development Centers, and we have them in the state of Washington. And I'm going to give you, um, we also have our contracting opportunities and uh, if through our 8A program and our certification programs for disadvantaged business enterprises, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, and those businesses that are in historically underutilized business zones based on our mapping tools. So I'm going to just cruise through these. I wanted to have give you the links for uh, SCORE and for our small business development centers in Washington and Northern Idaho. Our three women's business centers, again, they're located with um, uh, SNAP in Spokane, with the um, Thurston uh, Economic Development Council in Lacey, and then uh, in Seattle with the Business Impact Northwest. And then our Veterans Business Outreach Center is also housed out of Business Impact Northwest. So you have your contact information for me, and then contact information for the de deputy chief of the micro enterprise development division who manages all of this. So I'm gonna stop sharing because that's the end of my portion. Thank you. Excellent. Wow, Janie, that's a lot of data right there. And yeah. so now that you have the big picture, the overview and what all this uh, these programs are encompassing, we're gonna hear from Karen Campbell, who's gonna just kind of plant seeds in your brain about operationally what needs to be in place. How does it work? How do you start all of that? So Karen, take it away. Great, thank you so much. And for those of you who get nervous and think, how am I gonna remember how to calculate that interest rate? There's a lot of training available and there's tools that are embedded in some of the software that's mandatory that you use to report um, to the micro lending program that helps you calculate them so you can't make a mistake. Just so you know that, I just wanted to give you that assurance. So um, I'm here today from SNAP Financial Access. Uh, we are a subsidiary of Spokane Neighborhood Action Partners. We've got tons of wraparound programs that really um, ensure that our clients are getting what they need to be financially successful. Next slide, please. Um, and this is kind of an overview of all of the services we offer here at SNAP Financial Access. We are an SBA micro lender. We're also a CDFI, a community development financial institution. So we've got access to a lot of capital. Our theory is, is that you can have all the capital in, in the world, but if you're not deploying it um, hand in glove with all the knowledge that people need to become, really great business owners and homeowners and responsible borrowers. One is no good without the other. So um, we really try to pair those two things up. We start with a really robust personal financial stability and education program. Once you get a budget kind of established and some stability working, we really work with clients next to either self-identify and say, hey, I want to become a homeowner or I've got this great business idea or maybe I already have a business and we, we just need a little bit of help making it be more profitable or work a little bit better. I think I mentioned I was an entrepreneur. I think back now on how afraid I was to borrow money. If I had had the courage and the guidance to do that, the right amount of money at the right time, I'm convinced I could have taken my business further faster than I did. Um, so I come at it from that perspective. I also have shared with some people, one of the happiest days of my life was when I opened my own business. I don't think I had a better feeling, maybe a top five 
um, in my life. And I love sharing that feeling and imagining clients that we're working with having that feeling of um, complete elation. Um, it's a great feeling. So these are, uh, if you're looking at the small business ownership, we do the CDFI small business loans and SBA micro lending. And the way that we do that, again, is by pairing capital with knowledge, um, using the resources of our Women's Business Center, our SBA technical assistance grant. And then we also have uh, robust CDFI development services and a lot of discretionary funding. One of my main jobs is grant writing. And so writing grants and telling the story of what we do in the community is really powerful. Next slide, please. So we've been a micro lender in the SBA program for about the last 13 years. Um, and one of the advantages of using SBA micro lending as one of your products in terms of access to capital for all your clients is that it's not income or area median income limited um, for uh, particular borrowers who are coming in. Those of you who are CDFI know that you've got target markets and a lot of them are um, directed, at least in our case, we've chosen a target market of low income persons and combine that with um, low, low wealth census tracts. So, how do you meet the demand for somebody who needs capital who doesn't fall into the CDFI category? You've got SBA lending for that. And it's expensive to build capacity in first time borrowers. Those smaller loans probably take the most amount of technical assistance. How do you make um, it pay for itself? And the SBA program's got this great companion grant that we use, the SBA Technical Assistance Grant. That's how we make it work um, to get money out to people who need it the most, who also need the most help getting ready to become a borrower. So um, a combination of using CDFI and SBA micro lending funds makes us more inclusive, more accessible to people. Um, we've got folks on staff who are former entrepreneurs. We have people who also have worked in, say, the trucking industry. Um, I review all restaurant loans. That was my um, that was my small business, home renovation, childcare, all of those um, facets. If we don't know about it, we help our client find out about it, or we refer out to a community partner that's got more experience in those areas. Um, we've deployed about $2.4 million in SBA microloans since we started. You can see it's just a fraction of the $17 million that we've deployed as a CDFI, but it's a vital fraction of what we do. Next slide. Okay, so why uh, do we do this? Uh, it's really a challenge, as I said, to um, lend under $50,000. Most banks won't do it. And then people end up tapping their credit cards, and we know that doesn't always go as intended. So this is a vital resource for small businesses to be able to get those small dollar loans at a reasonable rate of interest. Um, the SBA average micro loan size is $13,000. Ours are a tiny bit higher, um, just under $20,000. We, um, according to our loan policies, we can combine it with other funds um, to get to a greater amount than 50000 We can go up to 250000 and we frequently blend um, borrowed capital, which is CDFI capital, with granted capital. That helps mitigate risk and provides a lot of coverage for our clients for um, TA. And Janie already went over, we can't use SBA microloans for um, existing debts or to purchase real estate. Next slide, please. So not all SBA micro lenders decide to avail themselves of the SBA technical assistance grant. Um, you can um, perform the program and be an SBA micro lender, but you must um, provide TA um, at your own expense or by using other grant writing sources. You don't have to take the SBA technical assistance grant. We love it because it gives so much coverage um, to be able to make sure that the portfolio stays in good standing, our borrowers know exactly what they're doing, and they reach out to us constantly via the grant. Next slide, please. So we think of it as layers of support. Um, we are layering, again, those CDFI funds with SBA micro lending funds and all sorts of technical assistance funds to create this kind of um, security net underneath our borrowers. 
And here are the must-haves here for to be able to get that technical assistance grant, 10 microloans per year. We've got the bonus grant available. Um, there's also some allowance if you're doing mostly rural lending and you check that, you can be eligible for uh, a additional um, grant funds. Each year, your TA grant is based on the prior year's lending. And you can see down here, we really have tried to strategically grow the program in terms of micro lending so that our TA grant grows along with it to really help expand the availability of our services. Right around 2019, we were having some real questions like, was this program working for us? And you could see our grant that year was low because we deployed fewer SBA microloans. We kind of got greater clarity by working very closely with DC and our uh, grant analysts there. And we had a lot of aha moments about how to make this work better. And I'll go into some of those in the, in the slides that are coming. But we've slowly been able to grow our grant um, to a level that really has helped us hire more people and build our, out our program. Next slide, please. So here are the must-haves. And again, there's a lot of acronyms. There's a ton of information here. I'm hoping that you'll take these away. Um, I'll touch on the high points. If you have questions, I'm happy to assist you. So you have to set up an account in EMPERS. That's a mysterious acronym. That's the Microenterprise Program Electronic Reporting System. Okay, so we have our loan processor actually updates that every month. And so that has to tie to receiving those payments in the microloan revolving loan fund that Janie mentioned earlier. So we have to do a reconciliation of that monthly. Before we do any loan to a SBA potential borrower, we, we have to verify that they don't have any federal debt um, before doing the microloan. So the CAVERS is a credit alert reporting system. Um, I have some forms that I'm going to show you about how we how we go through and make sure we're doing everything correctly. Another important part about this is the FEMA lookup. If, they're, if the client's business is in a floodplain, they need to get special flood insurance. Um, the promissory note has to be pledged to the SBA, and that language is clearly spelled out. You have to prove that you're providing technical assistance. Um, I saw earlier in the chat a question about fees. There are very strict limits Placed on fees that you can pass on to the borrower um, and late fees, interest rates, terms, et cetera. So those are all clearly spelled out in the SOP, but I'm happy to answer some questions on that. Each time you take out that loan as an intermediary, you have to set up a separate microloan revolving loan fund and the loan loss reserve. At SNAP Financial Access, we have three SBA loans, so we've got six of those accounts, and they're all specific to those separate tranches of money. Um, and then again, you can learn how to grow your TA award by making sure that you're deploying SBA funds um, yearly towards that goal. And we do a yearly um, random uh, audit of our files. Janie handles that from the SBA office in Seattle. Next slide, please. So here are some of those checklists that keep us in compliance. Um, and a lot of what I just went over, I pulled out the most important points. It's all contained in these checklists. So you really can't go wrong as long as you're following the checklist. It doesn't let you go any further in the process until you can check yes. Um, and then next slide, please. So uh, again, you'll see the closing documentation. It talks about everything having to be in blue ink and very a lot of details. Um, it took me a long time to figure out the credit memo is the loan proposal, okay? So I'm just going to tell you that right now. It is the loan proposal. Um, and the post-closing, uh, see there, there's the specification about late fees. Um, we typically would charge 10% for our other accounts. It's 5% here for SBA microloans. Um, next slide, please. Here's another piece of documentation that has to be included in each microloan file. If the request is over $20,000, the client needs to pick um, one of these and verify that they could not receive credit elsewhere. Might be too small an amount for a bank to be attracted to, might be an industry that's difficult to get funding in, like a restaurant. Um, 
might be a startup and they don't have two years of financial statements, so they've been denied everywhere. We make sure that this is in the file. Next slide, please. Okay, so if you decide you're going to become a micro lender, it's awesome. I think if you can make sure that you get the TA grant to go with it because it really helps pay for um, all of the level of service that you provide to clients. So it's a directed grant. You have to be eligible for it, and then you're invited to apply. It's not an open competitive grant. It requires a 25% match on your part, um, setting up some accounts, um, having a grant writer, um, really paying attention um, during those mandatory trainings that are online and attending the conference. You get so much good information about how to make that easier for you. Um, another thing that I didn't know before I started doing this work is all the staff that are on this grant have to be pre-approved and they have a pretty rigorous background check in the form of a 1081 job description and resume. Any changes to your staff require a lot of um, lead notice. Um, the grant is reimbursable, so you've got to be able to pay folks in real time and then wait for that reimbursement. The workbook is detailed. It takes some time to learn, um, and it helps to have a really great person that's your teammate in accounting that's helping you keep track of all of what you need to keep track of. Um, one of the things that has been an innovation is, um, so right now, 50% of the grant money can go up to 50% can go to pre-loan TA. No less than 50% can go to post-loan TA. That used to be a little bit lopsided, and we lobbied a whole bunch of people across the country, and they changed that. It used to be 25% had to go to pre-loan TA and 75 to post. Made it really hard to keep people in the pipeline and moving along. So that's been a good innovation. So next slide, please. And I'm going to wrap up real quick. We can good. let everybody see what allowable expenses are. I just want to, Sheree, if you could end on our success story, I want to just spend one second talking about beauty culture. Um, Quinn and this esthetician, she's done amazing work. Uh, she came to us from the Women's Business Center, did a lot of pre-development work, came over, was really successfully funded with an SBA microloan. She's an entrepreneur that wanted to have a space for herself to work. And then next slide, you could see her closing her loan. She also provided tons of training space and um, space that could be rented by budding entrepreneurs um, in the beauty industry. And she got her loan, she launched successfully, and she and some of those people that are renting from her are not coming to us for microloans. So my contact information is there. Please let me know if you need any help. Beautiful. Yeah, and I know that people may have wanted you to spend more time in some of those slides. All of the slide decks, the recording of this program will be available to everybody who registered. So just know everyone that that's true. All right, Shane. You know, one of the reasons why we wanted Shane to be here is because if those of you have close touch with businesses on the ground, you're excellent partners to consider this microloan program. So go for it, Shane. Again, I'm the small fish in this big pond, <laughs> but we are definitely making a statement right here in Eastern Washington. And our role is to be a positive and social impact to the communities of color, the BIPOC communities, addressing uh, systemic inequalities that are affecting uh, them financially and uh, stifling economic growth. One of the things that was heavy on, on my heart is making sure that we address the systemic issues when it comes to access to capital, which is why I reached out definitely to SBA to uh, understand a little bit more about this process and to see what our organization could do to make a difference in the communities of color that we serve. And one of the things that we decided to do was become a micro lender. And so we started out with uh, money that we funded, that we allocated just for those businesses who could not traditionally get a loan from our community uh, banks or inst financial institutions. We created space, a safe, trusted space for them to come to us, not just for training, 
but also for uh, financial support on the other side of opening and starting their business. A lot of the issue with our communities of color is once they do start sole proprietorships, a lot of times they want to become moved from just being a sole proprietor to a owner, an employer. So we are working with uh, several small businesses, helping them move from working from their kitchen to commercial kitchens, to advancing to ownership of their own brick and mortar businesses. Okay, so that is where we are. We're helping individuals, we're hand, uh, help, holding their hands, walking them through the process of business ownership, sustainability, and access to capital. And the opportunity to partner with SBA and our community will be a dream. And it's one of the things that we are looking forward to doing in the near future. So thank you for the opportunity to speak and uh, if you'd like more information about our micro lending, our micro loans, you can contact us at www.waacoc.com. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Shawnee. And if you all can put your contact information in the chat, uh, folks can reach out. I just want to say that this is a, a really powerful opportunity for those of you who want to become a SBA micro lender. You will be able to design your own strategy, your own plan for these grants, these loans, I'm sorry. Um, there's people available, Janie's available to help. Um, you will have grant funding to help along the program. And I wanna just say too, that there are partners in the state doing different kinds of lending. So know that this is not the only one, but it is a powerful strategy. So I'd like to open up the questions that we received, uh, one in the chat, uh, because uh, and then there are others as well. So first of all, this uh, this first question comes from, the question is, I'm interested in learning more, uh, learning if this program is a good fit for local Main Street programs, interested in helping local small businesses in their districts to access credit. So does it matter, Janie, whether it's a Main Street program or uh, a, a chamber of commerce, it really, does it really matter? No, it, it really doesn't. I mean, the, the fundamentals of who can participate in this program, they need to be able to demonstrate really the underwriting. You know, you want to be able to market the program. You want to be able to have loan procedures in there and policies, right? You want to be able to essentially um, underwrite the loan, document it successfully, do the servicing. And that technical assistance is really key, I think, to the ongoing success. And I just want to share that the uh, micro lenders are allowed to use those other technical assistance partners that we have, the SCORES, the Women's Business Centers. And I may not have said it exactly like that, but um, we want our partners to work together for that technical assistance, okay? One one more quick, so we have a few more questions I want to make sure we answer. One came from Rob Wooten, who said, who asked, uh, can you pass the uh, the third party costs like the UCC filing along to the borrower? Yes, that's that's allowed. I mean, you know, it needs to be reasonable for the transaction. But right. You are, you are Wonderful. Allowed. And then also, are universities eligible to apply? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I, you know, if they have a, they a need to have arm. the skill base to be able to do that, right? And have a lending arm. So okay. that, you know, I, they need to have that structure. So I would say if they have a nonprofit um, arm to be able to do lending, then that would fit within our program. Lovely. And then one more question was, can a venture capitalist angel investors become a formal SBA lender? Yeah, the, yes, again, they could be. Um, the thing is, we do have our small business investment companies that are venture capitalists and they can provide debt, they can provide equity or a combination of the two. And uh, those really are more for our um, higher higher risk type of um, and uh, borrowers or capital need um, business owners where they're trying to
create a new product and expand it out, develop the product. Um, so each one of our, our lending uh, groups has a little bit different role, but uh, they already technically can do debt, um, then they could use that as another tool. Wonderful. One last question. As a Washington-based microlender, uh, would these loans be eligible for non-Washington-based businesses, or do you have a footprint where those loans are allowable? Um, as part of the application process, you define your market area. Okay. And, um, and, you know, what we're trying to do by reaching out is really not, we have four micro lenders right now. Okay, three of them are in Western Washington, and SNAP is the only one that is located in, in Eastern Washington. And uh, the, the bottom line here is that doing this outreach to try and generate uh, more micro lenders, I'm really trying to make sure that we reach a diverse group of business owners um, geographically and everything. So right. when you're putting your application together, uh, I think you define what your geographic market area is. One of our uh, current micro lenders has a capacity to lend in multiple um, states. The thing is, they also need to work a little bit with our other district offices if they're outside of our footprint. Okay. Right. So, Perfect. Uh, does that answer the question? I hope so. I think it does. We're running out of time, but I do want to say those of you who are not, after listening to this, you don't want to become a micro lender. You can call on Business Impact Northwest or SNAP to come and do a loan for a business that's right in your network. So just don't feel like you have to do this in order to help a business that you serve get access to a micro loan. Another question come in. I don't want to go over, but we will answer that question. The question was, is there a toolkit that can help? Um, folks that wanting to get started. And we'll answer that in this information we send out. So thank you, everyone. We are finished. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all of those who you were able to attend. Thank you, Shawnee Fitzgerald. Thank you, Karen Campbell. Thank you, Janie Sacco, and especially Cherie Reef Spare for all that you did to help us get through this. Thank and um, <laughs> yeah, reach out anytime to me if you have any further questions. We wish you all the best. Talk to you soon.